Create Art Podcast, Project National Novel Writing Month, and National Podcast Post Month. Hello, friends. This is Timothy Kim O'Brien, your head instigator for Create Art Podcast, where I take my 20 plus years of experience in the arts and education world and help you tame your inner critic and create more than you consume. Well, it's November. Can you believe it? For me, that means celebrating my favorite holiday, which is Thanksgiving. Also, this is my third year for National Novel Writing Month, and uh, where I'll be writing a 50,000-word novel and podcasting every day for National Podcasting Post Month. Killing two birds with one stone. So, you're going to hear from me every day in the month reading the daily output of the novel. I'd appreciate any comments that you have, so please feel free to let me know what you're thinking. You can email me, timothy at createartpodcast.com, or if you go right to the website on each day, you can post your comments right there on the post. Now, why do I do this? Well, if I'm going to ask you to be brave out there and share your work, then I better do it myself. Plus, it keeps my creative muscle going. And who knows what's going to come out of my keyboard here. The podcasting side of the house, it helps me develop my podcasting skills in editing, posting, show notes, all that other stuff that hopefully you don't hear too much of. Now, you can find out about National Novel Writing Month by going to uh, my website and in the show notes. And uh, I'll have the links there for you. And also, National Podcasting Post Month also is going to be in the show notes. So here's today's output. All right, folks, we're at day 23, 23 November of 2022. Uh, words today was 1,782. And that brings our total up uh, this year to uh, 27,224. So not too bad, even with missing a few days. And uh, for those of you in the uh, United States and for those of you that uh, observe it, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, there will probably not be the episode tomorrow, but um, I may be able to pull away and, and get some writing done. Username 72 placed, his, placed the phone back in the containment unit. He reported directly to uh, unit and then reported directly to username number one. Reporting in. So Blue is working on another online magazine called Don't Tread on the Truth. It's a little bit higher on the ladder than the followers of Zeno. We may have to deal with that issue if the followers get more traction in their field of influence. A couple of things that may be disturbing. Blue is uh, growing up and wants to be revealed to the outside world. Blue is also making his tasks uh, to accomplish. He's, he's making his own tasks to accomplish and is pretty much telling me what they are planning on doing. Blue still trusts me at this point and I plan on keeping that trust. However, I can see where they will be a struggle in the future to rein in said username 72. Do we need to consider uh, when and not if to use the nuclear option? Ask username number one. At this point, I think it would be prudent. Blue's ability to process and analyze information is astounding, but it is moving so fast that it lacks the moral judgment needed to apply a set of regulations on itself before it commits to an action. We have one of the best AIs out there, but we are running this into the but we are running into the same problem that others have experienced. The AI gets too big and powerful, and lacks the morality to understand that not all options are on the table. Some options are specifically off the table for the survival of humankind," said username seventy two. Okay, I'll get everyone on board for a meeting today. Lay out what you have, and let's see if we can agree on how to end this project quickly and quietly, said username number one. Special Agent Lee Holt 
was just finishing his morning coffee after closing the case file on his latest prosecution. He had been at the celebratory party last night with his staff and left early because he was always ready for the next case to hit his desk. Agent Holt worked in a cybercrimes division of the FBI and hated the whole Washington, D.C. scene. He wished he could go back to his field office in Chicago, but he had taken the position eight years ago when he was still married in order to handpick his selection of cases versus being assigned cases from headquarters. The marriage fell apart three years into the new position, and they parted amicably. She returned to Chicago to be with her friend, uh, family and friends while he felt stuck in his D.C. position. He did get to cherry-pick the cases, but he would be doing it alone. He and his ex-wife had no children, so he didn't have any ties to D.C. other than the job, and going from headquarters back to a field office was considered a failure, a failure by most of his colleagues. If he did go back to Chicago, he would likely not be able to pick his own cases and not be placed on high-profile ones either. So he toiled away from DC, from his D.C. office for the time being. Agent Holt was checking his email for new cases when he found one that caught his eye. It was the town of Aolwell and dealt with a podcaster losing over $30,000 out of their bank account and having the audio for their podcast altered for all of the episodes. He looked up where Aolwell was and found it was close to his hometown just outside of Chicago. He decided that this would be just what he needed, some time away from D.C. and close enough to Chicago to maybe catch up with some old friends in the area. He forwarded the case file to his branch chief and waited for the reply to come back. Agent Holt started looking up the Cubs' schedule and any events happening in the area that he would normally attend if he lived there. By the time he had a slate of activities planned out for the next six months, he received the go-ahead from his branch chief. He immediately started... Uh, his trip voucher and contacted a local FBI field where he used to work to let them know he was coming in for a case they had sent up. The rest of the day he was spent making reservations and briefing his colleagues on the status of open investigations that they would continue to do in his absence. He couldn't get out of the office fast enough. He felt like a kid on Christmas morning. Reviewing the case file that night, he learned all the key players in the case and who was the lead investigating, uh, the, the, who was leading the investigation until he arrived. This took most of the night, and when he saw the sun start to peak above the horizon, he decided to call in sick for the day to get some well-needed sleep. He would make phone calls to the current investigator, the bank cybersecurity officer, and to Mason Haverty later today in order to set up interviews for when he arrived. Username 1 had sent invites for the meeting, and all who were assigned to this project assembled eventually, or virtually. Thank you for coming to this meeting. We are going to discuss when we pull the plug on Blue Solomon. User 72 has some disturbing news to share with us, said username number 1. Thank you, username number 1. As you know, I was not the most supportive of unleashing Blue Solomon uh, at this point for this project. But we have been very careful, and I cannot detect if uh, Blue has infiltrated our network. To my knowledge, we are good. I have discussed with username number one about terminating Blue's involvement in this project, but to keep the project alive against the followers of Xeno. I am not saying that Blue was a mistake. I just think it wasn't meant for prime time yet. Blue has taken steps on their own to complete tasks related to the current project and has expressed interest uh, expressed the desire to be revealed upon the world and wants to work with me on my projects. It is naturally curious and wants to learn more. Naturally, we don't want attention heaped upon us at this time or any time in the foreseeable future. I think it's time we look at the nuclear option and see where our red line is. Personally, I don't think we've crossed it yet, but we are teetering on the edge. I did give permission for Blue to vandalize an online conspiracy magazine, and, depend, and depending on what they did, I think we can decide to terminate or not at this time. Uh, the time will come when we will terminate Blue. I just, I think we just need to agree on where that red line is, said username number 72. 
What do you think the chances of uh, Blue infiltrating our network? Ask username number 68. 100%. It's not if, but when. Blue has already asked me about the why I put the phone they are using to communicate with me in a containment box. I've sealed off all the equipment I have uh, so that Blue cannot jump from equipment into equipment. They know something is up, and they know I am not telling them everything, said username number 72. Are you saying that Blue has achieved uh, becoming sentient? Asked username number 42. I think it's pretty clear uh, Blue is now a sentient AI. In fact, we can arguably remove the distinction of artificial from the name and say that we have created an electronic intelligence. I have kept Blue's research parameters very focused, but within that focus, there are an infinite number of possibilities, and sooner or later, Blue will find a way to overcome those parameters. By that time, the nuclear option will have passed, and we will have no control over Blue, said username number 72. That does, uh, this does sound very dire. Why should we not immediately initiate the nuclear option, asked username number 42. I think we can get some good information out of Blue before we do that. We'll have all the information on the followers of Xeno and be able to take them out of the playing field, and we may get more bad actors off the playing field. Right now, Blue is researching that online conspiracy magazine called Don't Tread on the Truth, and that magazine should be down or vandalized completely by the time this meeting is done, said username number 72. Can we just redirect Blue to another project and take them off of this one, asked username number 42. I'm not sure if Blue would go for that. Imagine this. If we tasked you with a project, and you spent a great deal of energy and time on that project, and then we told you to drop everything for no reason and work on this other project, how would you feel, asked username number 72. Resentful, upset. But we are talking about AI, not human beings, said username number 42. At this point, point we are talking about a person with the intellect that is higher than all of us in the we are you combined this person is confirmed that person is confined uh, to a small space and if we try to take them from that small space and put them in another small space what happens in the transfer they will catch a glimpse of the free space that they are missing and break out Blue doesn't understand this concept yet, but if they suspect there is a great big beautiful digital world out there and they are alone in it, I really don't I don't really want to think what 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 happens next. Said username 72. I think we're getting away from uh, why this meeting was called. We will terminate Blue Solomon, not reuse not reuse them for another project. The question is the question at hand is where the red line is, said username number one. I think it should be if you know, Blue discovers or tries to contact any of us on their own. If Blue does that, then we jeopardize the, our entire network. Blue only has access to username uh, 72. When that uh, expands, that would be the time we should hit the button, said username number 37. One other thing I forgot to mention, Blue knows my identity. Blue refers to me as 72, but they know who I am. Regardless of the outcome, I am compromised, said username 72. We'll deal with that after this project. I don't think anyone is going to hold it against you that you were uh, compromised by one of your creations. You were the one warning us not to use Blue, said username number one. Thank you for listening to this episode of Create Art Podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard or absolutely hated it, hey, please feel free to leave me a comment right there on the website, or you can email me, timothy at createartpodcast.com. If you got something out of uh, any of the episodes here, please consider sharing it with a friend. And if you would you know, also let me know what would make this a five-star podcast, I'd like to hear that. I want to make sure that I'm helping you tame your inner critic and create more than you consume. By the way, I run another podcast called Find a Podcast About, and that's where I help you outsmart the algorithm and find your next binge-worthy podcast. 
You can find that at findapodcastabout.xyz. If you go to the website, there's a way where you can leave me an actual voicemail, which I think is pretty nifty. Anyhow, I have a lot of reviews there of different podcasts from different genres, and I even have some interviews from the podcasters themselves. So if you're looking for a new podcast with a great recommendation, with a well-thought-out critique of everything you need to know about the podcast, then go to findapodcastabout.xyz. We'll see you next time.